Hello again, YouTube. Let me first send out a big thanks to all my loyal subscribers. Today we have our 7th generation 2003 Honda Accord in the garage, and it needs some brake work. So this car was at the dealer last weekend for service to get the airbag uh, recall performed. And while it was there, as they always do, they check out the whole car to see if there are any other issues that need to be addressed and recommended to the customer. They discovered that the car needed rear brake work. I knew that I needed rear pads soon, so that wasn't a surprise, but they pointed out that the right rear outer pad was wearing unevenly to the inner pad, and that could be explained by a sticking caliper. They also noted that the uh, the brake rotor was rusty, which is not an uncommon thing. And, uh, to the tune of $1,317, they recommended new pads on both sides of the rear, new calipers, and new rotors. So my intent today is not to be cheap, it's not to uh, second guess their recommendation, but it's to make my own second opinion and to see what we think after we investigate it ourselves. You crack the lug nuts loose first while it's still on the ground. Now we can jack it up and get the wheel off. Note that I've got the front wheels chocked for safety, don't want it rolling down the driveway. I do have it in second gear and I'm going to release the parking brake to free up the brakes in the rear. And the car is stable on those front wheel chocks. Taking a closer look now at this brake rotor, I think I'm tending to agree with the dealership's assessment of its condition. The surface here is not only rusty, but it's uh, somewhat scored and really rough. Lots of pits. I've had rusty discs before, but that's common practice after it rains. And, you know, you drive a block and apply it to the brakes and it scrapes that ru surface rust off and it's, that's normal. But this is not. So seeing this now, I'm certainly going to replace it take a look at the brake pads. This is the outer rear pad and this is the metal backing plate and the friction material is down in that gap and there's barely any gap left so we are like right on the cusp actually beyond uh, the point where we should replace these pads. So I'm certainly going to do that. You can also tell by looking through the caliper that the, uh, the amount of meat left on this outer uh, pad is far less than the meat or friction material on the inner pad, so we definitely have something going on with the caliper here. Maybe the slides are binding, maybe the piston is stuck. We'll take a look at that a little more closely when we get the caliper off, but uh, let's go take a look at the other side and see if it's similar. So this side, the driver's side, doesn't seem nearly as bad. But if we're going to replace a rotor on one side, we need to do them in pairs, so we would do this side as well, no matter what its condition. The pads on this side look fine. You see here's the metal backing plate and the friction material inside of that. It's got plenty of meat still on it, and there's even wear between this one and the inner pad, so that isn't an issue on this side. But then again, we'll be putting new pads both on the left and right hand side. Back on the passenger side now, I want to get the caliper off, and to do so I need to expand it or compress the, the piston back into the caliper. One way to do that is to put a C-clamp against this uh, the back side of this brake pad and against the other side of the caliper. That's a big C-clamp, and we can just kind of hook it around like that. Of course, being careful about what we're pushing against back here. I'm not going to push very hard, but just kind of slowly turn this in to compress that piston and that way that'll release the pressure of the pads on the disc that should be enough yep so I got a little bit of play here on my pad and I should be able to get that past the lip of the disc and we have two bolts one here and one down here that go through the sliding pins there's an inner bolt here with two flats on it I can counter hold it that way while I loosen this bolt.
There we go. Now for the lower one. Now with those loose, we ought to be able to move the caliper off of the disc. There's the outer pad. So I'm just going to rest that right there so it doesn't put any pressure on the brake line. Take my pads out. Let's take a closer look at these pads now. This is the outer pad, this is the inner pad. You can see how much of the metal backing plate there is here on the outer pad versus this one. Look how much more friction material there is on the inner pad and almost nothing left at all on the outer pad. So that's definitely an indication that there's either a problem with the caliper or that these uh, sliding pins are, are binding somehow. Now to remove the rotor, we need to remove the caliper bracket which is held on by these two bolts here, the lower one and the upper one from the back side. So there's our caliper bracket. The slide pins seem to be moving nice and freely. Uh, that does not look to be our issue, so I bet uh, our problem is with the caliper. Now to get this rotor off, you can see it's got two screws that hold it on. There's one there, Phillips head screw, and one on the other side. Now those things are going to be a bear to get out. I did spray them a while ago with some penetrating oil. Let that soak in for another 15 minutes or so. But there's another technique that works well to kind of break that rust free before we try and take that out because the danger is to uh, try and back that screw out with the screwdriver and strip the Phillips head. So one thing you can do first is to put uh, a ball peen hammer on the head of that screw and whack it with another hammer. Just like that. Not to tear up the head any, but just to induce, induce that shock. Try and break some of that rust free before we try and get into it. Now before we go any further, let's just kind of give it a little test. I don't want to tear up the heads of these Phillips screws. I'm just going to gently see if I can back those out. It doesn't look like I can. Those are really stuck. So I'm not going to try any further. I'll risk tearing those up and then if I do I'll have to drill them out. The next thing is to use a hand impact tool like this. It's basically a Phillips screwdriver with a big metal handle that rotates when you hit it. So this is a handheld impact driver and I don't know if you can really tell, but as this goes in, it rotates a little bit, depending on which direction you hold it. If I hold it this direction, it'll rotate that direction. If I hold it this direction, push it in, it'll rotate that direction. What that does is you can attach a socket to the end of this or this adapter and a Phillips bit, an impact Phillips bit. And now what you do is you insert it into the screw. Since I removed the brakes I got no way to hold this thing still so I'm gonna just put a clamp on here just on the disc just a little bit just to let the thing rest against the dust shield so I got something to push against. It's not gonna be a lot of force. Now I'll use my hand impact driver put it into the head of the screw and rotate it the left or counterclockwise against the head of the screw and then hit it with a big hammer. Just 
just in one shot, it broke that screw free. Believe me, that's a lot easier than stripping out the screw and having to drill it out. I've done that before. Try the bottom one. Put the tool into the head of the screw. Hold it to the left, not to the right, but to the left, counterclockwise. Make sure it's embedded all the way and give it a good whack. Sweet! That's the way it's supposed to work. All right, let's see if this will come off. What's happening here is I think it's getting hung up on this little ring of rust around the hub. I just need to persuade it. There we go. This side is much nicer. This side is pretty sad. Let's go ahead and see what we got going on here now on the driver's side. I'm going to go ahead and remove the screw since uh, before I take the brakes off. Uh, one of them is already missing, so we only have one to remove. Now let's compress the piston a little bit. And now we'll take these two bolts out of the slide pins and remove the caliper. And we'll just lay the caliper up here out of the way so as not to stress the uh, brake lines there. Let's check out the condition of these pads compared to the passenger side. That's the outer one that was really worn on the, uh, the other side. Lots of friction material still there. There's the inner pad and fairly even wear with the outer versus the inner. One thing I noticed on these is that inner pad was installed this way. You see the wear indicator? That's wrong. That shouldn't be on the top, it should be on the bottom. This is actually the inner pad for the passenger side, and the one on the other side was the inner pad for this, the driver's side. So when we put those back on, we're going to put the pads in the right place, such that this wear indicator, or squealer as sometimes they call them, uh, goes on the lower bottom. These pins feel fairly free, but I'm noticing on this one I got a torn boot. I'll have to get a new boot. So let's remove this caliper bracket. Sure would be quicker and easier to use air tools, but not all of us have air tools. This just shows that job like this is completely possible with just hand tools. Okay. 
and the caliper bracket from the driver's side. There's a better view of the torn boot on that uh, on that caliper pin. The lower one as well. Definitely need two more new boots. Now to get the rotor off, a couple of whacks between the studs. Just to break the rust free. Something to note looking at these uh, rotors here. This one on the driver's side is still you know, a little bit pitted. That could be resurfaced, but it's really not that much more about the same to, uh, to just replace them. But if you're going to resurface them, or if they look fine and you just want to check their minimum thickness, it's usually stamped here on the back side. I don't know if you can see that engraving there, but it says minimum thickness 8 millimeters. So you'd measure that with a micrometer and see if that's at least 8 millimeters and make sure that you're not um, below the minimum thickness. But well, we're going to replace these anyway, rather than resurfacing them. So I'm going to go ahead and replace these brake calipers on both sides, starting here on the uh, left driver's side. Um, I'm going to remove, before I remove the brake line, I have to remove a bracket here on the front. And the brake line comes down from the car and attaches right there with that bolt. So we'll remove that first. Now with the brake line free, I'm going to remove the brake line from this fitting on the caliper. Hopefully not drip too much brake fluid. Man, that's a tight one, boy. Certainly would have been easier to loosen this while it was still attached to the car. I'm going to try and do it this way. not happening. Sometimes it's best to use the right tool for the right job. Since I didn't want to work too much harder on that by hand, just use the air impact. <laughs> Quick and easy. The reason I disconnected that brake line, so I won't lose too much brake fluid. Get that out of there. I'm going to bring my brake line around like this. So here I've suspended the end of the brake line high in the wheel well using a bungee cord and uh, the suspension spring. The idea is to have the end of it hopefully as high as the uh, reservoir is under the hood to keep it from dripping. Now the parking brake cable back here looks like the last thing holding the caliper on. And it looks like there's just a clip. This clip can just be removed to get that off. Just slid that clip up with a flat-headed screwdriver. Will that just pop out or not? What's holding that in there, huh? I think I can stick a screwdriver in here and rotate it just enough to get the parking brake off that little thing there. There we are. Alright, so the cable goes through this bracket back here, but that looks kind of stuck. I'm not sure how that comes off. The bolt right here, let's just take this whole bracket off and be done with it. And there's our old caliper. We'll take that in for a core return on our remanufactured ones. Just repeat the process here on the passenger side. I'm first going to remove the, uh, the brake hose bracket. Then remove this end of the parking brake cable. Just gonna hook that spring back onto the little hook there. And 
I'm going to zip off the bracket holding on the parking brake cable. And then we'll remove the brake line itself. And move quickly so it doesn't drip all over the place. Then I suspended the, uh, the brake line up as high as I could here with the bungee cord up in the tower so that the end of it is up high and it won't be dripping on me in the meantime. So I went online and did a little bit of shopping and I got my stuff. Got it from different sources to see if I could save a little bit of money. Believe it or not, I found these on Amazon, my two uh, brake discs. The rotors were not even $15 a piece and that was with free shipping. Nothing special, just just a basic disc rotor. So two of those, and with a coupon in my local auto parts store, I've got a core return on remanufactured uh, calipers. These come with, you know, new bleed screws, new hardware for the brake line, uh, the mounting bracket. It's got pins, new boots, and the hardware for the uh, the pads. And I got. OEM pads, actually Honda pads. These also came from Amazon for a pretty good price. So I want to get the OEM pads. And these they have the wear indicators. I always invest in good pads. So there we go. I got all my parts and we're ready to go. Now these new rotors always come with a nice coating of oil on them to keep them from rusting. But we can't have that on them. So a little bit of brake parts cleaner. Alright, so now we have no oily residue on the actual braking surface. Starting here on the passenger side, let's go ahead and install the rotor. Remember we have the two threaded holes for those flat-headed bolts that hold the rotor on. So I'll get those lined up. And to make sure these screws come out easily next time, I'm going to use a little bit of anti-seize compound. Let's put a little bit of that on the head of the screw, or on the threads of the screw. This does a world of good toward making those easy to get out next time. Now for the caliper, the caliper sits right here. Now one thing to note is to make sure you get the correct one on the correct side. And we know this is the right one for the right side because here's the bleed screw for bleeding the, the uh, brake fluid and getting the air out of the system. That needs to be on top. If that was upside down and on the wrong side of the car, that'd be on the bottom and you wouldn't be able to bleed the air out very well. So I know I've got the correct one for the right side of the car. Now I'm going to take it apart and get the bracket off. So I'm going to take the bolts out of the, the guide pins. All right. So the bracket goes on like this. And the guide pins point toward the car. Slides in behind the little the knuckle. And the bolts go in from the back into the bracket. These are those big boy bolts. These guys are 14 millimeter. Snug them up a little bit first. And now I use my torque wrench and they get torqued to uh, 41 foot pounds. I know these are new calipers, or at least remanufactured calipers, and it feels like the guide pins are lubricated, but I'm just going to check. That's a normal routine that I normally would do. I'm going to pull the guide pins out, being careful not to rip the boot, like so. I can pull these out. I can see these are already nicely lubricated with silicone grease. 
So I don't have to do that. Put back in. Boot snaps on nicely. So my guide pins are ready to go. Nice smooth action there. So now for the caliper and to make putting the brake pads in uh, easier I'm just going to put in the top bolt by hand into the guide pin just barely hand tight so that way now I can pivot it up and out of the way and put my brake pads in place. I need to put in the caliper spring. The spring sits up right in here like that. Kind of hangs up in the top. Sits right there. Then we've got two retainers. They go on this way. One on the bracket down there. And this one goes this way. It gives her a nice smooth surface for the uh, brake pads to glide on. This is the inner pad for the passenger side. We can tell because it goes this way. And the wear indicator goes on the bottom. Now the way that wear indicator works, it's a little spring steel piece of metal. And as the friction material wears down beyond the tip of that wear indicator, it will ride on the, the metal disc and make a little squealing sound. And, and that's how you know that you need new brakes. At least that's the idea. So we'll slide this up, put the pad in there in the retainer, between the retainers. The outer pads are identical for both sides. Put that one on this side. And then there's an outer pad shim. There's a metal shim with a slight rubberized coating on it. I think that's supposed to help keep the brakes from making noise. It clips onto the pad like that. So as I hold the pads together, I should be able to put the caliper over the two pads. Compress the uh, pin in until the whole caliper is now down in the right place. I can put the last bolt into the lower guide pin. Now we can tighten up the guide pin bolts. You have to counter hold them with a wrench. And that's 17 foot pounds of torque. Now we can take the parking brake uh, cable bracket and reinstall that. It's a little hard to see because it's kind of upside down. And to finish off the parking brake, we just need to hook the end of the cable onto this little post. You probably just do it by hand. Yep. That's all there is to it. Lastly, we can install the brake line on this side. Uh, I've still got it suspended up on the spring to keep it from uh, from dripping. So here's the banjo bolt that holds it in place. You can see the banjo bolt has has a hole in each side of it on the side of the shank. Plus we have these two, I guess they're copper ceiling washers that go on either side of the banjo fitting. So let me remove the brake line, route it back through where it goes, place it between that little V notch. One ceiling washer goes in, another ceiling washer goes on top, and then the banjo bolt goes through the whole thing. Tighten that down, 12 millimeter socket, and just so that I don't over tighten it or under tighten it, this gets torqued to 25 foot pounds. Coming back around to the front now, we want to re-secure the brake line. So that's it for the passenger side. Everything's all put back together. Driver's side is exactly the same, just a mirror image of the same process. So here's the driver's side all done and buttoned up. There's the end of the uh, parking brake cable on the spring mechanism. The brake line here is torqued down to 25 foot-pounds and the bleed screw has a new rubber boot or rubber cap. Now I just completed bleeding all the air out of the braking system 
So I didn't show you the bleeding process. That's the subject of many other videos out there. I'll leave it up to you to go check one of those out. But my purpose here was to simply show you the, uh, the hardware installation. And with that, let's get the wheels back on. And I'm just going to tighten up the lug nuts by hand to start. And get it back on the ground. Now we want to properly torque down these lug nuts on this Honda. It's 80 foot-pounds. So here's a very important last step and don't forget this. After replacing brake pads and retracting those calipers, there's going to be a gap between the, uh, the pads and the, the brake rotors and you need to take up that, uh, that space by pumping the brakes a few times. If you don't, you might find yourself coasting down your driveway towards your neighbor's Mercedes and it takes a couple of pumps of uh, brakes to get brakes back. So always want to pump your brakes a couple times until you get a hard pedal. And there we go. So now I know I've got my brakes completely seated and ready to go. All right, let's wrap this thing up and see how we did. So totaling up my costs, the remanufactured calipers were about $100. That included a coupon I found online for my local auto parts store, plus the credit for the core return of the, the old calipers. The rotors were $32. Genuine Honda brake pads set me back $57. And I went through about $8 in brake fluid doing a full brake fluid flush. So my total cost came up to be about $197. Not too bad. Since the dealer quoted me $1,317, that comes up to a savings of $1,120. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Granted, I didn't use genuine Honda rotors or calipers, but I'm happy with my choice of parts. I hope you learned something today, and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And for more, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.